Welcome everyone to GoGoBo World GGW Sharks 41. It's been over 40 events so far. We, we are doing these events, and uh, two days ago we had one in Palo Alto. About 100 people participated, and it was fantastic. We did some buzz together with you in Silicon Valley. Now we are doing this again online from, with people from the United States and around the world. And um, uh, so. Uh, I'm gonna give you some rules. Uh, I'll tell you what GoGoBot World does and we'll present investors in a few moments and then we'll jump right into our pitch event uh, uh, after that. So, with long ado, let's get started. GoGoBot World is the place, is the platform where we connect investors and startups. We make so precise connections. So, for the startups, they need to waste their time on those investors who are not interested and investors don't need to spend too much time or uh, time at all on those deals of founders who are not a fit to them at all. So we are trying to create less connections but quality instead of supplying you with cold funding a request and something like that. So our intelligence system is helping you with that. How it works, the investors are building, uh, making their profiles like you do with LinkedIn, like five, 10 minutes and it's done. Uh, and startups are doing their white one pages it's also quite uh, fast, like 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes. And it, everyone goes through verification. And the, simple, the information is so simple and straightforward, so you can decide faster, either pass or connect. And we connect not only on the platform, but also outside the platform, so you can share your profiles and connect with the audience outside our network as well. Well, the, uh, the uh, platform is quite intelligent. So I'm showing you the basic part. Uh, and uh, we are using your criteria, investor criteria or startup criteria to make exact matches. But we are not just stopping in there. We are learning from your actions. We are trying to make this so precise so you don't have to use your gut feel or something. Yes, there is always room for improvement, but we are learning from you know, what you do to help you with your goals, connecting with the right relevant people. Now, when we are talking about relevancy, we mean it because we put a lot of algorithms and mathematics into this technology to make this relevant, precise connections where you are taking your final decision. And you can see here, the system is actually selecting, pre-selecting the right founders, startups or investors before you take your final say, connect. That's it. So this is what we do. Uh, you can check out our platform. I'm sharing the link here in the chat. And now I'm starting DigiW Sharks 41st. And I'm excited about that. So who are the investors today? We have Spencer Tiesa, Andrew Gluck, Jelen Gantwark, John Frankel, Artyom, Artyom Borachon. Uh, well, John told us that he, can, uh, he, he will have to go 15 minutes before the end of the event. So we all know that and respect. So thank you, John, for saying us that. But I will let investors to present themselves uh, in a few moments. But yeah. before that, session for you is second. I muted. Uh, okay. So before we get, begin, uh, um, the rules. Please keep yourself muted all the time, except for investors. Raise your hand to pitch if you want to pitch. Uh, there is a digital button uh, to raise hand. And in order for you to be selected, uh, you need to have your, mm, your name and last name uh, in your Zoom profile and a company name. Uh, it's important. So and keep your video on so we can uh, make sure that's a real person and we know you so we can locate you and give you a, a chance to pitch. Please respect time. It, is two hours event maximum. So go Google World platform are pitching first, then those who filled out their startup profiles and emailed us, and then everyone else. It's a free event, but we have to make it organized. This will be on the first come first serve basis. Uh, and the decisions are made, uh, made by my team here, go Google World uh, account here in Zoom. Uh, if you want to pitch, you can reach out to them here in the chat as well. Uh, saying what's your traction and ask, answer their questions. Well, uh, it's only for startups with sales, evidence of IPs and scalable business model. If you are a traditional business, nothing goes wrong with that, but it's just not the place where you would pitch. Um, if you don't get a chance to pitch, it's fine. Uh, we will always try to give you a chance uh, on the next event. So just reach out to my team at this email and we will make sure to put you on the list for the next one. Well, finally, uh, 
how to make this an ideal elevator pitch. Keep it as a story and get to the point what you do and why you're unique. Say about attraction and if you pitched before, tell us what has changed significantly since you pitched last time. And remember, we, are, uh, we have a networking event as well, so we have investors in the chat, network, exchange your contacts, uh, support each other. It's not a place where you to, where someone to sell something, so if somebody is selling something to you, tell me that on my team, we will have to let these people go from the chat. That's it. Uh, uh, on this note, I think this is the moment where we will ask investors to present themselves. And uh, let's start probably with John. John, tell us about yourself about your fund, uh, your criteria, whatever you want to say to investors uh, about you. Uh, you're muted, John. <laughs> My name is John Frankel. I am a founding partner of FF Venture Capital. Uh, we've been in market for 16 years. We look at early stage companies when they're just getting going. Um, and then follow on deeply up to about a 50 million valuation on stock. Uh, we do a lot of stuff to help companies. About half our companies get to a Series B and about 10% get to a 100 million revenue run rate, both of which are uh, ahead, of the, um, ahead of the averages. Uh, we like deep tech, drones, robotics, applied AI. Um, uh, we have quite a few investments in fintech. We also have a fund in Europe, uh, focused on Central Eastern Europe, Austria, and Germany. Uh, and we have an office in Warsaw as well as an office in New York. Fantastic. Exciting to have you with us and uh, look forward to uh, to see what startups you will select. Ileana. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Yeah, please take his next step. Um, hi, all. I'm with Splint Capital. Um, uh, we're an early stage fund based in Boston. Uh, we do seed runs and Series A runs. The check size for seed runs is anywhere between a few hundred thousand to a million. The check size for Series A is between a million and five million. Uh, we're generalists. We all have technical backgrounds, so we feel pretty comfortable investing in anything tech, uh, as long as we're capable of understanding it. Thank you very much. Exciting to have you again, Elena. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Gluck, please go next. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, Andrew Gluck, I'm the founder and sole GP at Irreverent VC. We're an early stage fund focused on ad tech, martech, uh, next gen commerce, e com enablement, some vertical SaaS and fintech as well. Um, we can lead pre seed rounds, um, get involved in seed rounds all the way through C. Um, typical check size is 250 to 500K. Awesome. Thank you so much. Exciting to have you and uh, look forward to see what deals you will take. And, uh, and uh, Artyom Borachonak. Artyom is the second time on uh, on our event uh, this week, so he's already tired of being a judge. Uh, and then we're really grateful you are part of us uh, today. Thank you. So, Artyom, tell us about yourself. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, the face to face event was great and uh, I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to this one as well. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been building companies uh, all my life, uh, and uh, I'm investing myself right now. I'm investing from as early as DAC and up to Series A. Uh, I'm investing in areas that excite me personally, and those right now happen to be AI, robotics, uh, space, uh, and uh, VR, AR. Um, so looking forward to. Uh, hearing the great pitches today exciting great to have you spencer yes uh you are opening this session tell us about yourself uh looking forward to get started yeah uh thanks now um so i was formerly with v venture partners uh currently doing angel investing um kind of globally uh lived in asia for a while so really like global scope and um anything check sizes for me personally anywhere up to 100k so yeah looking forward to getting started exciting to have you so on this note uh, i'm uh, ready to kick this off uh, those who are celebrating easter wish you all a happy easter upcoming easter this uh, 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 sunday and uh, let's get started so the first startup to present is oriel asquel from Re remote della ai um oriel are you ready 
Hi, Daniel. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the stage. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, let me find you. Just, I didn't find you. Just a second. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see you. All right, so fantastic. Are you listening? Yeah, you got okay, to. Okay, excellent. And we may see you. Know the... Okay. Thank you. Let's start. Did you know that conversational AI market is projected to skyrocket from 10 billion to 40 billion by 2028? With this explosive train in mind, I would like you to invite you to join us in this opportunity to home renovation market. My name is Oriel Esquivel, CEO founder at Remodel AI. Imagine that you want to refresh your kitchen. In the traditional way, you will have to make an appointment with an architect or interior designer. These professionals have to go to your house, take pictures, take measurements, and talk to you about your tastes and preferences. But how about if you will be able to take a picture by yourself and have a complete remodeling design? But we are not talking just about the design, but also list of labor, list of materials, and also our recommendation and you will recommend you furniture, professionals, and the best credit for your product. Let me introduce you, Sophia, our conversational AI agent for the best home renovation experience ever. Sophia streamlined the process with several models of artificial intelligence and natural conversational to provide personalized designs and also facilitating connections with supplier, professional and credits. Currently, we are running four B2B commercial pilots with major firms in Mexico. We are going to achieve 80K in monthly recurring revenue in the next four years to come. And each business is paying us for a setup fee and monthly maintenance and subscription model for each commercial location. And we are seeking for 500 units in a safe instrument in a pre seed round with a value in remodel at 5 million. I would like to invite you to be the owners of remodeling data in Latin America and US and reach this 40 billion opportunity in conversational AI. Join us to transform the home renovation industry. Thank you. All right, just five seconds past time. Thank you, appreciate that. Dear Sharks, dear investors, do you have any questions uh, to Ariel uh, from Remodel AI? Can you oh, talk okay. To, okay. Go ahead, ahead and learn. Yeah, I just wanted to ask how you came up with the idea. What led you to start this? Sorry. Yeah. How, how did you come up with the idea? Why did oh, you decide? Okay, okay. Uh, I I will be involved in the remodeling industry for a while, and in, in my other startup, we we did the matchmaking between architects and uh, offer and demand. You know. But we come up with the idea to make it simple, like with just a picture to connect all the value stream for the models. With just one picture, you know, for for the design. Connect all the value chain, all, all the value chain, just one what one, one picture. Uh Yes, Ariel, thank you for the presentation. So uh, I have a question about your traction. So you mentioned that you have some customers uh, outside of the US. Do you have any customers in the in the US? And uh, uh, what is like the average uh, check size? Like, give me a little bit uh, of feel for that, yeah. Yes, the, this our software as a service is about four, $400 uh, per, per location. Uh, we are running a pilot in Mexico for one big company with more than 1,000 distributors. So we are going to achieve like 200 distributors in the next uh, months to come. Uh, we are exploring the opportunity also in the U.S. I've been in Chicago like last month with a very big company also, but we, we didn't get it uh, today, until today. Thank you. Okay. How do you think about barriers to entry that you can build? Obviously, when you start a company, 
there's no barriers to entry. But over the next three to five years, what are the barriers to entry you can build so that as you build a big business, you can protect your margins? Yes, I know that is 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 not big barriers to enter in the in the AI field, you know. But uh, I have a lot of expertise, and also we have a very strong team. I'm pretty convinced that you have to be the first in the market to be relevant. Uh, we are we are backed from Google, so we we have a very strong product there uh, behind the scenes in the back end, you know. And uh, so our first differential is because uh, I think it's our vision and our team because we are taking a picture and connect all the value chain. It's not about just the design. There are a lot of things about the designs in TikTok and whatever, but we are we are putting this seriously in a business model. You know what I mean? Hey, I, I heard what you said, but you really need to think about the barriers to entry you can build over time yeah because the world yes. of the internet there's perfect competition of course and yes. barriers to entry the only way you can actually generate good margins over time yes thank you for that yes it's a it's a good point thank you maybe kind of along those same lines how are you sourcing data in a unique way uh, in the unique way, I, I mean, we are we are collecting all the data, and each company will will have their own dashboard with data, so they are going to be able to to have insights for for sales and also for for buy stuff, you know. I guess, but in 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 order to train the AI aspect of this, yes, uh, I mean the data we are we are running just large language models and also like fundamental fundamental models for of AI but we are also developing I have a, a data scientist also in my team we have a very strong tech team and the, the most difficult thing is to measurements you know from a single picture so with that measurements we will be able to have a complete estimate list of labor list of material just because we are be able to take a picture and have measurements. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we we are past time. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have any uh, final question to to uh, uh, Oriel? All right. Thank you. So uh, my question to to the sharks, uh, as usually we ask, who is in, who is out? Is there any shark interested to connect with Oriel? Uh, uh, please say. Okay, so all the sharks are out. Uh, Ariel, great job. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, the world needs to know about your project and please share your GGW profile here in the chat. We have more investors in the chat and please support others. Uh, pitching is not easy, so you did a great job. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. We're moving on. And the next presenter is Alek Galinker. Alek, uh, you there? Please shout out. Hi, hi, it's me. Hi, everyone. All right, so I'm putting you on the stage. You've got two minutes and you may start now. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Oleg. I'm a founder and CEO of uh, Truly. Uh, in my previous job, I was a founding CTO of Global E, which had a 4 billion NASDAQ IPO in uh, 2021. So after successfully exiting, I'm working on Truly together with our killer team and uh, funding it as a seed investor. Uh, truly is a photo sharing app for groups who want an easy way to exchange the moments <clears throat> they actually experience together. Uh, for example, it's your birthday. Uh, people are taking photos of food and uh, of each other. Then they manually have to select all these photos and they send them on WhatsApp. And uh, what's next? Uh, just multiply it by the number of guests, mix it with uh, all these texts and uh, screenshots and jokes that uh, you have in all the uh, chats and uh, also add your own cluttered phone gallery and you will realize that your memories are buried in this clutter. Uh, just rest in peace. Uh, with uh, Truly, 
uh, you won't have to manually select photos or to dig them from WhatsApp chats anymore. It will just happen. So the app will automatically curate your photos and exchange them with the rest of the of the group. It will also uh, scan your uh, phone gallery for meaningful uh, memories that you can also relieve with uh, your friends exactly the same way. It's like uh, taking a ride on a time machine with your friends to the past. So we're building a mainstream utility for people to save and share their memories. Uh, from the business perspective, our business model is targeting a half a trillion dollar uh, creator economy. And our clients are event venues and uh, event hosts. Uh, they are willing to pay for uh, access to the organic content and for tags on Instagram by their guests, essentially. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right on time. Like, perfect. Thank you. Dear Sharks, any questions to like? So, oh, look, we often see companies like this that are taking, you know, platforms that are built by other people in this case google photos or mm -hmm. apple photos and then build on top of them mm -hmm. and invariably at some point the giant wakes up and just builds that feature so the you know some of the things you describe are very similar to you know i'm in the apple ecosystem so similar to what apple is doing yeah. but i have to believe with ios 18 and their increased focus on ai Mm -hmm. that you run the risk that you build a great feature and then apple maybe not this year maybe not next year but at some point just builds that in as as, as an added feature of what they offer and google similarly yeah and so you know given that you know again it comes down to barriers to entry but there's always a risk building on top of someone else's platform Mm -hmm. yeah. and and so and so yeah that's my concern here yeah of course that's uh the, one of the major concerns obviously that uh, has uh, worried me as well as uh, as i mentioned i am a seed investor in this venture myself and i've invested a significant uh, funds uh, to say at least uh so the secret here is that uh, uh neither apple nor google are uh, cross-platform companies in order to, uh, you mean obviously the uh, Apple Photos and Google Photos. So they have these memory features that are doing uh, pretty much uh, similar things, but they have this glass ceiling. Essentially, if you want to uh, create a seamless experience for uh, the group, which has, uh, which is not homogeneous, which has both Android and uh, Apple devices inside, like your birthday, for example, or like your wedding, for example, or going forward, even a larger scale events, you will end up uh, in uh, not being able to serve all your uh, clients in the same uh, uh, seamless way. So Apple simply don't exist on, on Android. For Google, that's a bit different story. Google Photos obviously does exist on, uh, on Apple, but only 6% of uh, iPhone users are currently using uh, Google Photos. Uh, and the only reason why they have been using it historically is because uh, Google has offered uh, free unlimited storage for their photos and videos up until Janu June uh, 2021. Uh, since that's this point, Alphabet has woken up and they said, hey, guys, we are in a, a tough business here. We want to make money from something which is not only search and ads. Uh, so they started to monetize it, and basically they have started to include uh, your photos and videos to your general quota, to, together with your Gmail and your the rest of your uh, files on your Google Drive. So, uh, so now after uh, two and a half years, people are actually uh, seeing this uh, limitation in action, and uh, obviously their revenue is uh, through the roof. You have seen their reports; so they have almost uh, caught up with uh, Google search regarding profitability. But uh, their growth is uh, not there anymore. Uh, we have read uh, hundreds of reviews of uh, poor uh, Google Photos users on uh, on Apple uh, uh, App Store. There are horrible stories, like people uh, literally losing their photos because they don't want to pay twice. Thank you, Alec. To, uh, yeah, appreciate that. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, we have uh, time for uh, maybe one uh, more question to Alec. Do you have any other questions? Uh, what's the uh, what's the monetization strategy 
Yeah. Uh, so, so we are uh, currently interviewing uh, the clients, which are uh, event uh, venues like uh, restaurants, like uh, wineries, uh, like uh, pretty much every anywhere you can uh, come and uh, where you want other people to to come as well. So they're interested in food traffic and they're interested in being tagged on uh, on Instagram, essentially. So that's number one. So we'll bring them the people who will have an amazing experience in their uh, restaurant or winery or whatever, and uh, people can uh, frictionlessly tag them while they share it uh, uh, with each other with no friction, with just one click. That's number one. Number two, uh, we are also speaking with uh, HR and uh, who are running uh, client, uh, so employee events and uh, marketing departments who are running client events. So they uh, have a different interest. They want the organic content, basically. They don't want to miss uh, the uh, points of view that are there in the event. Definitely, if it's a larger scale event, so they just want access to the portals. So our model is currently built on uh, roughly uh, 50 cent per event attendee in a form of per usage or uh, subscription-based model. Thank you. Uh, dear Sharks. Oh, okay, Artyom. Daniel. A quick remark, it's not a question. So just, uh, Alec, I think, uh, I wonder, it feels like there is a way to make this, to tweak it somehow so it becomes about a more meaningful problem. No, kind of, I'm not trying to like diminish something. You've done a lot of work, I'm sure. But okay. it, it would be very interesting to hear from you if you would like think through this and see how it can be more meaningful problem uh, than just helping venues to drive traffic. I don't know, like my my couple of cents. And... Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. We are in early stage and we are now, as I said, interviewing them and we are looking for the uh, exactly what is the what is their pain now and the water. But uh, uh, from uh, what we hear now, they are already willing to pay for that. We might be able to monetize even uh, others, or maybe some other some other uh, things. Where in early stage, I'm not making it up as if we have uh, right. sold it to thousands. Thank you, Alec. Appreciate that. Uh, um, uh, so we gotta move on. Um, uh, my uh, final question to the sharks: uh, Who is in? Who is out? Who is interested to connect with Alec uh, further on, or uh, who is out? Anyone in? Um. I've seen a few startups fail in this space, but if you want to send me a deck, there are a few others who might be tangential to what you're doing in the event space. I could hook Absolutely. you up. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So one shark is in. Congrats. Uh, so we'll connect you with uh, Spencer after the event tomorrow. Uh, anyone else? Perfect. LA, congrats. So one shark is in. Um, and we, we will okay. moving on. I have a little suggestion to the founders. Uh, keep your pitch shorter so you have more questions from investors. Uh, uh, because everyone, everyone's time is a little limited and we want to give you opportunity to listen to every investor. Thank you, Alec. Appreciate that. Uh, Denise Kutilov, you're next. Uh, are you ready? Yes. All right. Go for it. You got two minutes. You may start now. Okay. Okay. Hello. My name is Denis Kutilov and I'm the founder of You Through Video Startup. Um, according to sales figures, there are more than 12 million people who are paying for professional video editing software and 40 million more uh, are considered as video creators. And we are going to revolutionize the process of video creation for them. So uh, if I ask you to find an exact scene where your son is riding a bike for the first time, how long it will take? And now imagine that you have to find 50 or a hundred of similar scenes to create a video. So the problem that we are sol solving is that professionals and communicators are now spending 80% of the time to find and structure content, video content, and scenes in their own video uh, to use them in a project. So that is the problem. And our service helps to find and describe specific content and scenes in unsorted video files on user local storages, uh, to use them instantly in ongoing projects or to share them right away in social media. Uh, so we started this project as a solution for our own video production, and then we realized that it would be beneficial to the whole industry um, of professionals, influencers, and even regular people. 
so now we uh, have an online version of our service almost ready. It will conduct search on user users Google disks only, and uh, with the final project we plan uh, product we plan to reach two million users in five years with annual subscription subscription of um, ninety five dollars. So. Uh, which will give us an annual turnover of approximately $180 million. So uh, now we are at pre-seed stage. Uh, we are plan to, planning to uh, start sales uh, this month, uh, I mean in, in April. So uh, we are searching for uh, 500K and uh, we have we, and we have considered a couple of pivots for this product because we have um, yes, your best time. Uh, please, please wrap this up. What yeah. would be your final statement uh, for, for the sharks? So we have uh, a possibility to uh, for a couple of pivots uh, like uh, intellectual storytelling based um, generative service uh, to create videos from our described scenes, which will help uh, in editing uh, for for everyone who who is dealing with it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dear Shark, yeah. any questions to Dennis? I you know I again think that you run the risk that to extent that you found something that's really useful utility that it can become a feature of a platform, whether Adobe or Apple or any of the big video editing platforms, they understand the problems in workflows and they've continued over time to try and address those problems and add in more features that are helpful. Mm -hmm. um, you have to believe they had someone in those organizations is saying, how do we bring AI in to our product to make it more efficient and so again i you know i'm just concerned you have great utility it's all about execution someone someone said earlier first to market has an advantage i always feel the second to market has an advantage you know google was not the first in search engines alta vista kind of was and even they may not have been first um it's often the case that the second person in can execute but but you may have some advantage here of, of building up some traction before a platform decides to add it. But it does strike me that it's um, uh, it's a relatively obvious solution for them to try and help solve. And it clearly, if Adobe does it, then Apple want to do it, and, and other platforms just because um, it'll become a. St I'm concerned it becomes a standard feature. Basically, uh, you know, uh, Google and Microsoft already does this, but they does they they do this do they do this in in a way of technology, so they are, do not consider it right like a final product because it's not interesting for them like like all other products. So you have uh, you, you have uh, like um, Google Cloud, you know, and uh, a lot of tools in them in it uh, to use that they sell to other um, developers like us you know and uh, they are do not interest they are not interested in uh, in uh, some product because they are selling the technology so and now uh, in our product we are using uh, all, uh, we are using image recognition from uh, microsoft and from google and it doesn't mean that they are using it dealing with the final product and I think that their model, uh, their financial model and interest is uh, different from from creating any product for 5 million people. All right. That's it. Thank you, Denise. Uh, if you can, please shorten your answer if possible. But I mean, trying to not get okay. to you, but I'm going to give you a chance to hear other investors if any other questions from uh, anyone else. Uh, Elena? Uh, yeah, Denise, maybe a question about. Uh, um... Like, uh, how how are you planning to make money? Uh, if you're going to sell to influencers, what do you think they're going to pay you? What are they willing to pay you? So for, we are planning to to to, to make um, a subscription annual subscription for ninety five dollars. That is quite good price. And uh, you know, um, um, 
so so that's it so so that that is the form uh, of uh, making money for us so subscription we have already a uh, free subscription like for uh, 100 minutes of video and we'll try to uh, and we will see we will we will launch this product and we will see how to, how the how the audience will react and what's your estimate for custom acquisition cost uh, no, we do not now have this estimation. Um, uh, it's it's under this uh, subscription price, uh, but we do not have it because we cannot um, we cannot calculate the final uh, price for recognition because it is depending on the amount of people who will use this uh, service and with personal uh, relationship with google or microsoft until we will until we will uh, until we implement our own uh, our own uh, neural networks okay so thank you so much dear sharks uh, my question to you is there anyone interested to connect with Dan dennis uh, is anyone in or out okay denise thank you please share your ggw profile here in the chat we look forward to see you succeed uh good luck uh, and uh, please support us entrepreneurs yeah. doing great job thank you um the next entrepreneur to present is shelly gupta shelly from bucket box shelly you ready yes i'm ready hi all right you got two minutes go for it Okay, it's Saturday morning, and you've spent all week figuring out what activity to do with your kids. It has to be something that'll help them learn, will keep their attention, and that you can be part of, but it also needs to be fun, a new experience, and doesn't require an Ikea-like assembly just to get started. And not even Mary Poppins can pull this off, yet parents are facing this dilemma week after week after week. I'm Shelly Gupta, the founder and CEO of Bake It Box. Bake it Box is the at-home family baking kit that teaches STEM lessons through food and culture. From Persian love cake to Mexican churros to South African black pepper cookies, you hop around the map as your kids' taste buds and neurons get treated. Every ingredient is pre-measured with easy color-coded recipes and learning activities for when the item is in the oven. And we're not just another cookie cutter meal kit. We are the only family focused educational kids product combining STEM, food, and culture. We sell both subscriptions and one time purchases of our product. Our menu ranges from single offerings like the Persian Love Cake to themed adventures such as our Forces of Nature three kit bundle highlighting Earth Day, the Ring of Fire, and Earthquake Engineering. And Bake It Box is a hit because we've sold over 30,000 in our first six months of being live with a five-star customer rating. And we're raising capital now to create the next generation of memories. And through a ton of testing, we also found our sweet spot. Based on customer feedback, we introduced STEM in late 2023. And this has led us to down a partner-led growth strategy, including homeschooling, seasonal retail, and brand partners. And just to give you a little bit of a snapshot of how big these markets are, there are over 3 million kids enrolled in homeschooling in the US with over $200 million in funding available by the states. So we are officially approved as homeschooling curriculum in three states so far, and more applications are on their way. So with Bake It Box, win Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon, and every other opportunity for family time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right on time. Appreciate that. Dear investors, what do you think about these projects? Do you have any questions? I, uh, I, I'll start. Um, what can you walk us through LTV and against CAC for both, you know, one time and also any of the subscription offerings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have it for subscription offerings at, at, at the moment. Our LTV is between 185 and 200 dollars margin, naturally. Um, and just to give you guys some context on that, though, we've been around for only three quarters, so we only have three quarters of our data. So that's kind of an estimate. Our CAC today is hitting at, a, at about 100. It's high, and I can admit that. Um, Ecom and CAC on like Meta and Google has been very high for us, which is part of the reason why we're actually uh, selling through other channels like the homeschooling channel. 
Um, so we, we, we invest in plated, so I know a little bit about the mill kit space. Um, and they're very difficult to grow. Um, what happens is you estimate what you think your lifetime value is. You mark it up to that kind of value in order to get scale. But the problem is you get one mishap in putting the kits together and it just destroys your lifetime value because people get upset. There was a missing ingredient. There was, you know, whatever. Um, it does sound like you've got type execution. And I think going via distribution partners is essential here. And I also think that homeschooling is a trend that will continue to grow. So if you can find cheap ways to get the message out there, I think there's there's real opportunity. And particularly the STEM side allows you to um, uh, leverage, you know, a lower cost acquisition, as it were. Um, uh, it's probably not something for us, but I think I think you might be on something here, Shirley. Sounds interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there more questions uh, from the sharks? Uh, yeah, I'm curious, Shelley. What's the uh, I don't know what's the unfair advantage on the distribution side, or any other unfair advantage that you feel like is your thing uh, that you bring uh, to this market? Because yeah, consumer markets are tough uh, yeah. but doable. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so one, and this kind of touches on what John was saying, we're all shelf stable and our components and our ingredients really stem from like some commodity items, as you can imagine, sugar, flour, cocoa powder that are very cheap. So um, we have a cost advantage at this point for compared to other meal kits and other food companies or food kits. But the alternative is that STEM through baking is something that hasn't been done before. We're definitely following in the footsteps of like the other STEM kits that are very successful and that have created a market for us. Kiwi Crate is one of them. Love Every is another um, that are crushing it and they're doing great. So we know there's a market for this. So um, in terms of our like, you know, advantage, we're really doing it through the brand and through the concept of STEM through baking. We've built a huge influencer network that's already like talking about us, mom fluencers that we call them, talking about us in their communities. And we're just continuing to build our brand clout that way. I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, are there more questions to Shelly? All right. Thank you, Shelley. So uh, uh, my final question to you guys, is there any shark interested to connect? Are you guys in or out? Who's in? I'd be interested in connecting. I don't have any good questions or anything to ask, but I'm um, curious to learn more. It seems like a very interesting space. So. Fantastic. One awesome. shark. Thank you. Any, any other yeah, sharks? I, I can, uh, I'd be happy to connect on some of the marketing stuff. Um, to see if there's you know any advice I can I can give there uh, to help with uh, on the CAC side. Awesome, thanks, Andrew. Two sharks, and it's getting more interesting. Fantastic. Anyone else? Well, it's not a good fit for us, but I really enjoyed the presentation, and I will take a look at it. I think my daughter will enjoy it. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Please share your uh, information here in the chat, uh, especially your GGW profile, support others, and be moving on. The next startup to present is Alex Schaufhausen. Uh, Alex, are you there? You ready? Yep. Yep, I'm here. All right. Uh, let me put you on the stage. Okay. Got it. So you got two minutes, uh, and you may start now. Sounds good. Hey, everyone. My name is Alex, and I am the founder of Achieve Pay. So the problem we're solving is ACH payments take one to three business days to process, sometimes even longer. So we at Achieve Pay make ACH payments settle instantly, and we define instant as 30 minutes or less. And we also have a proprietary algorithm that, that routes your payment through the fastest, cheapest payment route possible. So it could be RTP directly, FedNow, Visa Direct, or whatever the fastest, cheapest payment rail is available to you. So we have our, our sponsorship bank done and we have some traction. We have $28,500 worth of revenue per month from our two pilot customers. And we have two more customers in the pipeline. 
Uh, and we focus on ACH because it's a massive industry. It's a $76.7 trillion industry. And our go-to-market is focusing specifically on entertainment and payments within the entertainment space. We are raising $1.5 million, uh, and we have about 600,000 soft circled and in diligence for now. So that is what we do. Sounds fantastic. It's like below your time, like in one minute. Perfect. Uh, short and sweet. Short and sweet. Fantastic. Yeah, sharks. Okay, go ahead, Spencer. Yeah, so this is like the bane of my existence for several years running a consumer internet company, just doing refunds to ACH. So what what are you guys doing differently? Why you? Why now? Why isn't anyone doing this? Yeah, so, okay, so the why now? So basically what we do, I mean, the simplest way to put it is we convert all the ACH payments to an instant payment rail, such as RTP, FedNow, and Visa Direct. So why now? Well, Basically, RTP now is 65% coverage with regional banks, so it has enough coverage where it actually works. Same with FedNow. It just was released last year, and it maybe has 5 to 10% coverage. And then for the final 35 40%, we use Visa Direct. So the why now is the technology just came available to do this, whereas even three years ago, this wouldn't even be possible. Gotcha. Okay. How do you get paid? Where, where, where's the money coming from and who are your customers? Yeah, so we have a $500 per month subscription fee for small mid-market businesses and then a 5K per month um, white label fee. Um, so our current customers are SMBs paying $500 per month and then a 0.1% transaction fee. One of our customers flows is about $500,000 per day and another one is about um, two to $3 million per month on average. But most of our money will be made from the transaction fees. Yeah. Right. And and ACH is free, even if yeah. it's delayed a couple of days. So effectively, the, the small business is paying some money to accelerate ACH. Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. Yep. Isn't there talk of ACH moving to, you know, one day and same day over time? I mean, some banks have same day and some banks have one day, but still sometimes you need your payment instantly. And that is a service that we provide. For example, restaurants, you know, they got vendors to pay. They need the money now. Some some of our partners that we're talking to in the music industry, they need their money now because there's such delays and the money gets transferred between three or four different parties. So some people don't care. Some people really need it. And that's what we're really focusing on. Thank you. Well, yep. You say 0.1% your fee. How much of that fee is yours versus what you need to uh, send downwards to the rest of the uh, infrastructure? Uh, about 70% of the fee is ours. Yep. For now. And that, that will change as we scale up. But said about 70% of that's ours. Okay. Are there more questions? Is there anyone uh, interested to connect with Alex, uh, I guess, in or out? I, I'd be really curious to see a deck. I'm generally allergic to fintech, but this seems like it's solving a problem I have some experience with. So I, I'd love to learn. Yeah, no problem. All right, one shark is in. Anyone else? Okay. Alex? Um, it's interesting to me that I have, I have a competitive investment in the space, so. Well, respect uh thanks appreciate that uh anyone else okay alex great job uh, fantastic presentation share your information here and we'll connect with investors after the event probably tomorrow thank you moving on and the next presenter is uh aksha uh, akarsh vinod uh akarsh shout out to where you are hello uh, found it yep i'm here you got two minutes. You may start now. Wonderful. Well, you know, good morning, and it's great to meet all of you. My name is Akersh, and I am the founder of a new audio tech company, Dio, and we are aiming to corner the audio IoT market with our new speaker. Uh, audio is becoming the next big content boom of the internet, but as someone who personally listens to podcasts and audiobooks every single day, I realized that our modern day audio devices are actually holding us back. Either you have outdated technology like Bluetooth with its various limitations, or you have the IoT smart speakers that are unnecessarily complex and highly restrictive. 
limiting what you can listen to, how, which apps you can use. So I set out to reimagine and honestly really perfect uh, audio devices to make listening to audio a simple and seamlessly integrated experience in your daily life. Since we launched our speaker last year, we've already sold thousands of units, and we actually ended 2023 with nearly $150,000 in revenue. Uh, and we've also seen uh, almost 6% of our customers return to buy more speakers within 12 months of purchasing uh, and also have uh, like a phenomenally low order return rate uh, where we beat the industry average by about 2.4x for uh, consumer electronics. So yeah, it's been a very exciting journey. Very excited to continue growing this thing and happy to take any questions. Awesome. So fast. Well, like uh, one minute and a half. Perfect. Uh, dear Sharks, do you have any questions? Uh, of course, thank you for the presentation. What do you think is the market size for this? So um, I, I listen to audiobooks all the time and I listen to podcasts, but uh, until now, I didn't realize that there were any issues. Like, do you, do you need to do a lot of education in order to make people believe, like, it's not what you want? Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. I, I, there's, I think, two questions there, right? In terms of customer education, yes. That has actually been our laser focus since launching. Uh, and all of last year was almost entirely focused on how do we educate the customer? You know, like, what what is it that we need to do to continue, you know, um, helping people understand what makes us so unique from uh, the audio devices that they're used to using, you know, already. Um, so we've invested a lot, you know, we've, we're building out support videos. If you go to our website, you'll see a lot of resources around like how this works, you know, animations that show how to use it, um, as well as a lot of like our value props. Um, now in terms of the market size, right? So that is something where, you know, if you just look at it purely off of like uh, the current size of speakers, right? Um, right now, the most conservative estimates out there show that in the United States, it's about a $9 billion market and the world is about 20 billion. And those are conservative estimates. Um, and the best estimate, like the, you know, the aggressive estimates actually show that this is, you know, upwards of 80 billion, you know, dollar market in the US. And it goes into nuances of audio devices and hearables and some other things. Um, from our side alone, right? What we like, what we're doing, I think, is actually solving a gigantic problem in the industry that's going to grow this pie a lot more than just like current speaker sales. Um, and the reason for that is that because most uh, wireless speakers right now are Bluetooth speakers, right? Let's say they kind of get themselves caught in this sales spiral, uh, like a death spiral, where uh, you can only really connect to one Bluetooth speaker at a time. So as a customer, you think you only need one speaker, right? So when you're on the market for buying an audio device, you'll buy one and then you'll go off the market and then you'll maybe have like a Bluetooth speaker and you're like, oh, I just bought one, why would I buy another one, right? Whereas for us, we're actually trying to make audio this seamless experience across your home so that it is easy and affordable to set up your entire home with audio. So what we've seen is that the first orders, like first customer orders, um are about three and a half speakers per order and then six percent of those customers are coming back to buy more and so we're actually seeing like instead of constantly needing to chase the next customer after we make a sale we're actually seeing an ability to just engage with our current audience and continue to you know expand their home audio setup you know with them uh and so i think that's actually going to grow the market size a, a lot more than just current speaker sales when you look at those reports so, thank you yeah any other questions from the sharks? This could be a really stupid question, but um, why hasn't anyone else integrated wireless into speakers? Actually, a lot of people have, right? So like Sonos right now is, you know, they're the ones that probably pioneered this multi-room audio space. And then you've, of course, got like the Google Homes and the Alexas. But the problem with all of these devices is that they, as I mentioned, they are... Uh, highly complex and highly restricted, right? They are basically, both from a brand and a technology standpoint, they've basically opted to go this route where they are focusing either on like niche audiences or high-end audiences, either like really techie tech enthusiasts that care more about like voice assistants and controlling their light bulbs and their coffee machines, but having a really bad user experience with audio. So that's like the Google Homes and the Alexas of the world. And then you got folks like Sonos, who, because they built their moat around like very 
audio file centric IP, right? Like automatic acoustic detection and things like that. They're all of their hardware is so stacked up with so much, you know, like so much hardware that um, they can only really sell their speakers at a premium and they can therefore only focus on the highest ends of the market. And they essentially become a fancy home theater system rather than truly a whole home audio system. Um, and so people have tried and, you know, I think John mentioned earlier that like, it's not really the first movers, it's the second movers that get the advantage. That's really what I saw in the market when I saw all of these various brands trying to compete. And as a consumer, nothing ever actually solved the problem of just seamlessly integrating access, you know, to your audio content, wherever you go. Um, and I, you know, I learned from that and I have both a technical background and an operations background. And so I just kind of like looked at the whole thing and I was like, I think I can do this way better. And that's how we okay. got it. So, uh, Akash, uh, if you can shorten your answer, so we have more questions. That's why it would be fantastic. So, uh, all right. Artem? Uh, good questions. I, I still like, I have HomePod, I have a couple of Alexas. I can connect to them using my phone so basically uh, uh, turn my turn them into my speaker for the phone can you maybe yeah in one sentence or in two sentences explain what what i going to get on top of that or how your experience with your system is different better sure sure there are three fundamental differences right so um the first thing is that we are uh i i guess you know just low hanging fruit we're actually more private we don't build in microphones into our no 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 talk about me um yeah. how my experience gonna be better you yeah gonna x you gonna z you gonna y whatever uh, absolutely yeah so let's move on to the point number two right which is that our speakers are a lot more robust for your audio experience than any of those right i got google homes in my ha home uh when i was first kind of like trying to solve this problem for myself and i realized wait I can't play audio from my, or sorry, audible from my Google home speakers. I can't play YouTube from Amazon, you know, Amazon speakers. None of them can play RSS feed based podcast apps like your Apple podcast app or more, more uh, most podcast apps. They limit you to a restricted number of services and partners. And you're never going to be able to also listen to stuff like your mom's WeChat recordings or Clubhouse, oh, wait. Uh, or, you know, Facebook Live. I, I um, can, I, can I stop you here? Because I'm not yeah. getting this. I I can totally pair my phone and play whatever I, whatever plays on my phone on my home pod or that, on so, my... so yeah that is so that's half true right so home pod yes through airplay on iphone right there's like which we also are airplay enabled um you know as one of our things you're right for home pod right and home pod's a little bit unique and niche because it's like through apple and it integrates into their ecosystem you go to like the rest of things right um, and that's where like the Google Homes and the Alexas and stuff are are a little bit different, right? HomePod has, that's, I think that's probably an offline conversation because HomePod's actually like a very unique deep dive there um, between what they do. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely fine. Don't, don't, don't need to, if, if it's good, yeah, for sure, for sure. no need to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but the majority gotta, of competitors, I guess, besides HomePod, Akash, you know, you gotta continue. Say, so you are you are a great oh, uh, sure. speaker, but it's it's taking too long time, and lots of people are willing to present. Appreciate that. Uh, totally understand. Amazing project. Uh, share your details here in the chat. We're moving on. Thank you, Akash. Oh, just a second. <laughs> uh, in, uh, who is interested to connect with Akash? Uh, is there an in or out? Okay, Spencer. All right. So, uh, Spencer, uh, one, one, uh, one shark is in. Congrats. So, thank you, Akash. We're moving on. The next one yes. is Ethan Berg. Ethan, you there? I'm here. Uh, let me locate you. I don't see you. One moment. I found it. Uh, my uh, my only ask to all entrepreneurs, please shorten your answers because we will uh, you, you will have less questions from investors and maybe less investors will be connecting with you because of that. Um, I, I know it's hard uh, to make it shorter. So, uh, Ethan, please go. Uh, you may start now. You got two minutes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ethan Berg. I'm the founder and CEO of Agora World, and we simplify 3D creation. When I was a student in college and a non-coder, I wanted to build a VR shopping platform. It was only a couple of years ago, ended up being really cool. First one ever integrated with Shopify. 
Um, but it ultimately didn't work. Uh, it was still primitive. It was super technical. We spent 12 months building it and I spent $75,000 of my own money doing it. And after that didn't work, we, it turned out there were hundreds of thousands of other creators just like me facing the same exact problem. So to solve that high barrier, I started building Agora World. Our customers call us Canva for 3D. We're building a no-code social XR engine and large world model that empowers anyone to create immersive photorealistic 3D experiences and digital twins in minutes. So our customers can comprehend and interact with the world in a more human-like way. Um, after three years of building rigorously and doing R&D, we've raised 400,000 to date. We've done international accelerator programs, worked with brands like Hyundai, Audi, University of Pennsylvania. We've got government accounts in the pipeline that I can't say too much about. Um, and since our beta launched last January, 270,000 in LOIs, 1,000 creators building 2,500 experiences to date. And we'll be in Hong Kong next month pitching the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park as a finalist. Uh, our team's serial founders, 40 years in XR, 100 years or 100 apps built. Our chief growth officer has 250 million views on LinkedIn last year. Um, and our advisory board includes the inventor of augmented reality, founder of real networks, metaverse experts, and more. So we're raising one and a half million right now. We got 500,000 committed. And if you're interested, I'd love to show you more. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Right on time. I appreciate that. Uh, dear Sharks, what do you think about the Gore World? Do you have any questions? What's the adoption uh, right now, or is it this, uh, public or I know, production ready? Yeah, no, no, it's live. So we have people using it. it. Takes about two minutes on average to create a 3D model of 50 countries, 2,500 cities. We're elevating that every week with new partnerships, leveraging new data sets. What's the now double? How do you measure the adoption? Yeah, so uh, right now we had 350 creators last month. Um, for reference, um, they build, what was it, like 700 experiences, give or take. Um, we're seeing a lot of brands coming our way. So our pipeline in eight weeks has grown uh, about a, one and a half million, and we signed 270,000 LOIs past three weeks alone. Hmm. Thank you. Are there more questions from the Sharks? Perfect. Uh, has changed? You've been, as you said, uh, for, for a while, what changed recently that you started to see, if anything, that you started to see the adoption growing? Yeah. So, I mean, a few things. Number one, early technology takes a lot to actually build a robust platform. Um, so we've been building and doing research and development, honestly, for the past couple of years. And so that's been a large culmination. Tech's finally caught up. Processing power, um, new chips, all of this has finally led to where we are now, where it's actually possible to deploy large scale applications, especially at runtime. I mean, we're doing, you know, we can do 50,000 concurrent users at once per experience. And so, you know, that obviously takes a lot of compute, not to mention the fact that each of these scenes are gigabytes in size, if not larger. Um, so there, there's a lot kind of happening there. And uh, on the adoption end, we launched the digital twin creation tool. So you just type in an address, click go, and we'll literally build a 3D model of all those locations for you instantly. And you integrate your own data layers and things like that as well, um, using our data scheme and AI powering that. And so um, with that, that tool has been what's blown up. Um, before that, it was kind of focused more on social XR creation. So building your own XR apps, uh, 3D platforms. As you know, the metaverse is kind of come and gone. It's a, a nice trend in a way. And, you know, I'm not here to say it's going away. I don't think so. But what we found is that there's a ready market need for digital twins, making things smarter, making things feel more real, um, augmenting things you do in the real world so that you can do it virtually rather than going on premises. Everyone's looking to lower costs, sustainability, things like that. And so we've seen a large jump since we launched that tool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Question to the sharks: Who's interested to connect with Ethan? Are you guys in or out? Our Tom is in. Congrats! So one shark is in. Uh, what about the rest of the sharks? Look forward to talking to you. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Ethan. Uh, please share your information in the chat. Uh, your GGW profile. We're moving on. Uh, great project. Uh, and Thank the, you. The next presenter is uh, Georg George Molzer. George, yeah. you're ready? Okay, putting you. I am. You got two minutes. Go for it. Awesome. 
I invite you to open your mind and think about an energy source that is available to every human being that um, does not produce any harm. It's beneficial to the environment. In fact, it fosters life. And the power it delivers is so much that you could power 2,000 industrialized Earths with it. And on top of that, it's totally free. Imagine that this energy source existed. Wouldn't it make sense to have an interface to connect with it and to plan with it? Of course it would. I'm Georg and I'm the founder and CEO of ShadowMap. And with this, we are building the interface to the sun. And um, you can imagine it like, like TCP IPs for the internet. ShadowMap is for the sun. We answer a very simple question and we can do this globally and for any location uh, at any time point, whether there is sun or not. And at the moment, it's a visualization solution. It's web-based. And in April, we are launching on top of that an analytics solution. You can imagine it like Google Solar API, but in full 3D. And you can also edit the data. You can upload your own models. You can even share your projects in the internet. Um, we are focusing on a PLG and SLG approach. So we have a product that sells on its own. And at the same time, we do sales and we started this year. And we try to integrate ShadowMap into existing real estate uh, platforms like Zillow and Willhaben, et cetera. Our attraction is we have 80,000 monthly unique active users, um, 2,300 paying users, and over 20,000 registered users. And ShadowMap works globally, anywhere on earth. The top countries are USA, uh, Germany, UK, Spain, and France. And we are growing 10% each month, and we are reaching 100K um, ARR. Uh, what would be your final statement right. to the Sharks? Um, yeah, we plan to raise money by the end of the year, and I'm happy to connect with fitting investors. And our vision is great, so it's really something you need to open your mind to. I love this, the final part. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Sharks, what do you think about that? Dark, what is the main use case? The main use case in B2C is that people are using it to evaluate apartments and homes. So before you buy it, you want to understand the light situation throughout the year. Imagine you look for an apartment now and you want to see how it's going to be in summer. For the B2P case, the main use case is um, real estate marketing and sales. And also solar energy is, is, is a big one in both sectors, actually. And we are believing that when we launch the analytics product next month, that solar energy is going to be an even bigger topic. Thank you. What's the big vision that you said? The big vision is that, yeah, if, if you imagine the sun being such an amazing source of energy, life and, and light, and you are we are building a, like a foundational layer to interface with it, then we are leveraging all that power. So you could, you could imagine that channel map is going to be a, a protocol which on top many, many other businesses build upon like solar energy businesses, real estate business, businesses and platforms. And also health is going to be a big topic. It's it's becoming more and more aware to people how important sunlight is on their skin, on their eyes, to get their hormone cycles ongoing, to reset their sleeping cycles. So it's a huge health topic. Actually, my idea came up 13 years ago when, when I was lacking sunlight and I was imagining an app that helps me find sun. And then when I started working on it four years ago, I came up with more and more ideas and also like being in contact with businesses and customers. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's really about realizing how important the sun is for all life on earth. I think that's a, an, a, an important sentiment to understand the big vision. Yeah. Are there more questions to George? Well, it's more of a comment than, than a question. I mean, I, I feel like the value to um, businesses is way higher than consumers. Like the willingness to pay for consumers is probably going to be pretty low. But for you know solar farms, I could see you know value there. Although again, I imagine there's a lot of other solutions out there. So I'd, I'd be curious in terms of like on the B two B side, how do you compete with you know everything else that's out there? Yeah, um, good point. So we started sales this year, so it's still fresh. And what we see is that um, B2B sales, it's slow, but it's it's fruitful. And we are in contact now with uh, real estate solutions, like real estate platforms in Austria, Norway, Germany. And 
and they want to integrate us, but what we see is that it takes a while for them to act fast. Um, how we stand out is by extreme simplicity. So our solution is web-based, it runs on any device, and you can easily integrate it by just taking an iframe and putting it onto your website. I think that's a big um, um, uh, advantage of our solution, that it's it, it can be integrated in five minutes, actually. You just need a location and it's up and running. Um, yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah, I'm going to answer that. Thank you. Thank you. I, this is this is a problem that residential solar companies are already addressing, correct? Like when if I want to put solar panels on my house, mm -hmm. the solar company is going to tell me where to put it, can make, make an estimate of how much power I'm going to get from there. Is that all being done by humans or, or is that something you're you're doing you're replacing an existing service how, how's that how's that work out yeah we're actually um learning about how solar companies are, are doing it right now and what we see is that it's quite complicated they often need to model the surroundings and and it takes a few hours to have like a precise basis on on what to work on the, the advantage of shadow map is that we already have 3d data globally available so we have terrain data we have buildings data in April, we are launching Google 3D tiles integration, so you have even better data. So you can basically just start with an existing scene integrated with a sun model, and then you just need to drop your solar panels in there, and you have um, an estimation done in five minutes or so. So I think I forgot this to, to answer in the previous question, that the big thing is that it's easy to use, and you already have a lot of data built in, which you can use and build upon. So we want to make it very simple and easy to get solar yield analysis. Um, but I, I'm open here, like we are at the moment getting in contact with solar installation businesses. It's it's also like a learning for us, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Sharks, who's interested to connect with George? Are you guys in or out? All right, so Artyom, right. uh, Artyom is interested to connect. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else? All right. Um, so one shark is in. Congrats. So thank you, George. Please share your GGW profile here in the chat. And uh, the next presenter is Henry Lin. Henry, are you here? Hi. All right. You Putting you on a stage. Fantastic. Great having you. Uh, so you got two minutes. Please take full advantage of that. OK, thanks for the opportunity to chat and share my product. I'm Henry, the founder of Athena AI, a personalized AI-powered life coach and counselor. Life coaching and counseling appointments can be very expensive with long wait times. Oh, Henry, we barely can hear you. Can you can you speak louder? Oh, okay. Let me try to uh, adjust my uh, audio settings. Uh, uh, is is this a little better? Better, but it's a little loud. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, I'll try to speak loudly too. No, <laughs> Thanks you, again. You uh, just to continue. restate. Sorry, continue. Okay, I'm um, I'm Henry, the founder of Athena AI, your personalized AI-powered life coach and counselor. Life coaching and counseling appointments can be very expensive with long wait times, leading to unmet needs in one's life and career. That's why we've created Athena AI, an AI-powered counselor and life coach that's available on your phone 24/7. Over the uh, so last several months, we have reached over 80,000 users and have 1 million questions asked within our app. In addition, we have 4,000 active users, daily active users, and 7,000 questions asked per day. Besides providing AI-powered life advice, we are also improving over alternatives in four ways. Number one, we provide a journal journaling feature to help users track progress in their goals and include an AI-powered companion to provide supportive encouragement along the way. Secondly, we have a community forum where users can share the best tips they receive and discuss their experiences so others may benefit as well. Thirdly, we are gathering feedback on the quality of each response so we can produce a fine-tuned AI model to produce even better answers in the space of um, life coaching and counseling. Lastly, in the future, we plan to offer realistic AI-generated video and audio so users can have video chats and connect with a real-life coach or counselor as needed. 
We have recently generated over $500 in revenue by charging users a subscription fee after they exceed a certain number of questions asked. And we plan to charge a referral fee in case when people um, want to connect with a real life coach or counselor. My co-founder and I have over 10 years of experience in the four key areas of AI, mobile app development, marketing, and life coaching. And I believe this makes us well positioned to succeed with Athena AI. Thanks for taking the time to consider our Welcome back. application. Thank you. Appreciate it, Henry. Yesharks, what do you think of Athena AI? Do you have any questions? Anyone? Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of different companies building the space and some of the spaces, obviously, it's probably going to be a huge opportunity. What's the biggest differentiator between your product and what's the biggest differentiator of you and or the team that you guys bring to the table? Uh, yeah, for both myself and I, I think myself, I have a, a background in machine learning and AI. My co-founder has a good background in marketing and life coaching. So with our expertise together, I believe we're a good fit for this space. And secondly, we really want to build on top of the AI advice. So the two features that we believe can add value are one is a community feature so that users can share experiences and really share encouragement with each other in terms of achieving various goals. And the other feature we now have is a journal. So users can track their uh, progress. And then we're having AI provide a current encouragement uh, with steps along for each step you accomplish on the way. And we have more as well planned with like AI generated video and audio as well. So it's more realistic uh, in the future as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, what about the rest of the sharks? Anyone interested to connect with Henry? Are you guys in or out? Henry, I just wanted to clarify how many users did you say that you had? 80,000? Uh, 80,000. So we have 80,000 active users on our uh, app. And we have over a million questions asked uh, so far. And how do you define an active user in your case? So right now, this is defined by active installed users. So um, we subtract out people that have uninstalled the app. OK, so it's somebody who installed the app, but those who installed the app but haven't used the app, are they active users? Uh, so I think uh, there's a mix that ha for the another feature that might uh, help is we have 20,000 registered users who have created okay. a registered account as well, which might help. And then more, maybe like half of that, ha maybe we have uh, 40,000 users who have asked at least one question. And what okay. would be weekly active? Uh, the I don't know. I don't have the exact weekly active, but I know for daily active, it's over uh, 4,000 right now. Thank you. Uh, dear Sharks, anyone interested to connect with Henry? Are you guys in? Okay, Artyom is in. One shark is in. Perfect. All right. So fantastic. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Your GG double profile in the chat. Uh, Henry, I would like to um maybe I would I would like to, to take a look at the deck as well. Two sharks are in. Sounds good. Okay. Interesting. Con congrats. Uh, fantastic. So moving on, and uh, the next presenter is uh, Nino Caras. Uh, Nino, you there? Hi, can you hear me? All right, fantastic. Go for it. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nino Caras. I'm the founder and CEO of Codewell AI. We create digital employees for the banking space that automate 90% of human-driven processes within the company, boost conversions in sales, and slash operational costs by 40%. Codevalia is a SaaS platform uh, that provides the banks with a proto-employee that has out-of-the-box knowledge for the industry. It speaks the industry language, it understands the products, etc. The platform enables the companies to basically deploy digital employees effortlessly within a single day, and we are the only platform in the world that ensures governance of communication and maintains answer consistency to solve the issue of hallucinations that all large language model technologies face. 
We offer three different types of digital employees, a customer service representative that basically automates the communication in the entire contact center, a sales agent that can recommend products and services based on customer needs, and an account manager that's basically a custom instance to provide all around service. Uh, in order to get a digital employee, the company goes through a really simple three-step process. First, they create an account on our platform. Second, they onboard their digital employees by filling in the blanks in the extensive knowledge base that we provide and they configure their products and step number three they launch in production and let it take over uh last year we raised our uh first pre-seed around of half a million dollars to deliver the platform we launched it in november and by now we have six paying clients out of which two big banks two financial services institutions a telco and a government as a team, we work in the industry for a very long time. We were the first European company to won a product hunt product of the year for the best chatbot back in 2016. We helped many companies automate entire departments with smart digital employees throughout the years. And last year, we won the How to Web Spotlight. So now we are raising our new round of $2 million US dollars to basically scale on the solution and commercialize in the banking space in the US. That's for my two minute pitch. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Perfect. It, like it's five seconds, even uh, less. Perfect. Well done. Uh, 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 dear Sharks, any questions to Nina? What are the use cases uh, your customers currently use your employees for? Uh, the most so they can automate any kind of a communication process from internal communication to external ones so processes such as hr up to processes such as sales and customer support the most common ones that we see are sales and customer support and can you maybe dive deeper one inch deeper into what exactly is being done there um so yeah absolutely so the customers they get out of the box um, uh, uh, knowledge base. So what they do, they they land on our platform, uh, they fill in the blanks in the knowledge base. For example, for the retail banking space, they have a knowledge base of a thousand topics that basically maps out the entire retail banking space. They provide their own answers to the uh, predefined knowledge base, attached documents, procedures, whatever. Um, and that can be done really easy within a day. Think of, they think of, then they configure their products. So they configure their loans, their deposits, whatever the bank is offering. And just from those two steps, they get a really powerful digital employee that first can have can answer any question related to the bank services. But second, based on the on the communication, it can acts uh, it, it acts as a real employee. So it can sell the services and products, guide them step by step, create amortization plans and schedules. It's not a QA type of thing. It's mostly like a communication with a real uh, real employee. Are those live uh, for those banks so their customers can interact with them, or is it still being deployed, developed? tested yeah that's a really good question uh we have uh launched um uh, one for the financial serve one one out of two financial services institutions is already live uh and one bank is about to launch next week uh the the other financial service institution and the bank are about to launch by the end of the month the government one is already live and the telco one is already live. all right more questions? Okay. Thank you, Nina. Uh, share your information in the chats. Uh, um, and uh, uh, the question to the sharks, uh, is there anyone interested to connect with this project, with this founder? Anyone in? Okay. Uh, uh, no sharks is in, but great work. Keep working on this. Uh, please uh, share your information. And we are moving on. Um, the other presenter is Brandon Gutierrez. Brandon, are you there? Uh, I am, but I think you skipped Laura by chance. Oh, oh sorry. I Laura, yeah. Happy. Thank you for that in that. Uh, my bad. Laura Taganova uh, from Adele. Uh, yes, yeah. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> sorry about that. Putting you on the stage. All right. Okay. <laughs> Good to have you. Good to have a fantastic smile. So you got 
your two minutes. Please go for it. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Laura, co-founder of Aldent AI, and we are helping businesses chatting with video cameras to get actionable insights using natural language. As a use case, just imagine you're the owner of coffee shop and you can ask Aldent AI in plain English uh, any questions about your business and get answers, like how many visitors were at the place for the last hour? Or what was the busiest time at the checkpoint for the last hour? Or how much time average customer is waiting his order? Um, or you can ask a prompt to monitor no queue at the checkpoint. Uh, like um, when there are more than 15 people in the line at the checkpoint, uh, make alert to call additional cashier. So we are building a simple yet powerful platform that can understand answers and real acts. Uh, about traction, um, we launched MVP in February this year. Uh, we have five pilots Asia-based uh, coffee shop chains, including a big one with uh, 162 spots. Also, we have search businesses on the waitlist as well, and we are going um, and we have ongoing in negotiation with U.S. companies as well, including large um, coffee shop uh, with uh, more than. 200 uh, spots over the world and uh, with 67 million in ARR. Uh, and uh, about team, uh, our team is backed by NVIDIA Inception program. Uh, we have background in restaurant businesses, in uh, data analytics, and uh, in AI recognition and uh, computer vision as well. And we are really passionate to use uh, technologies to help restaurants thrive. Thank you. Here. It's not that many female founders presenting uh, today, but <coughs> fantastic to have a female founder today presenting amazing work. Dear Sharks, do you have any questions to Laura? Uh, Laura, thank you for, for the presentation. So I think my question is, um, the restaurants and coffee shops, uh, they are uh, like low margin uh, businesses. And uh, this is where, why, like, selling any kind of like solutions to uh to restaurants, like software solutions, hardware like, to, to to restaurants and coffee shops, is difficult. And uh, the deals, like the the the, uh, the money that they're willing to pay you, are, are like the deal sizes are quite low. Uh, um, so what do you see? Uh, since you already have pilots, do you have a sense? or uh, what are they willing to pay you? Actually, yes, that's a good question. Uh, uh, we are not like focusing on just small uh, coffee shops. We are, we are focusing on middle and large enterprises that have the chain and more than like 100 or 50 spots. So uh, why they are? Uh, they are small, uh, but they are scalable and they are interested in uh, technology tools that make them faster, efficient, and on time. So uh, technology makes them competitive, uh, in, even in sales, they front franchisee. So makes uh, makes business more scalable with our tools. So what do you expect uh, to see there? Like, uh, I understand that you are trying to sell to chains. So mm -hmm. how much do you charge per location? Uh, um, for the U.S. companies now, the price it's for now for the pilots. I mean, um, it's not so. I mean, uh, approximately we are going to charge like uh, about uh, five uh, five uh, five thousand five thousand per year. One uh, one location. Okay. But uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Are there more questions from, from the investors? Okay. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, my question to the Sharks is there anyone in to connect with Laura and to learn more about their company or are you out? We have a few investments in this space on like shift work management, that kind of thing. So I think it might be interesting to connect you with them. So let's, let's talk. Thank right. you. One shark is in. Congratulations. Exciting. 
What about the rest of the sharks? All right. Thank you, Laura. Great job. Fantastic. Uh, please put information here in the chat. We look forward to see you succeed. Uh, the next presenter is Brandon Gutierrez. Uh, Brandon. Brandon. Hello. Okay. We found you. Putting you on the stage. Okay. Fantastic. You got two minutes. Let's rock. Go for it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Brandon Gutierrez. I'm one of three co founders of Botstacks. Botstacks is a SaaS enablement platform that makes people fall in love with business automation. How do we do this? We do this by making the chatbot or AI assistant creation process more collaborative and also powered by more than a single large language model. Botstacks has four large language models, including Claude, um, GPT, Mistral, and Gemini. This month, we're finishing up Bring Your Own Model. The purpose of this is because most people, most companies, have their own chatbots on their website, and that just isn't good enough. There are several companies that are looking to add their AI assistant or agent into their mobile app. Take Airbnb, for instance. Say you cannot find the key of the new place that you rented. You can't get a hold of the person that you rented it from. All of a sudden, an AI agent pops into the Android and iOS application, helping you to locate that missing key. Botstax has a way for our customers to create their own knowledge bases. We have, a, we have a, an open canvas to be able to design those bot sequences. Like I mentioned, we have numerous large language models to choose from. And what really sets us apart is we take this uh, perspective from the stance of a unified communication provider. We have the only native SDKs for mobile deployment, meaning the majority of those chatbot products or platforms out there, most of them do not have LLMs for one thing. And the second thing is they only allow you to integrate onto your own website with a pop-up or maybe Discord or WhatsApp. We have native Kotlin and Swift SDKs for these enterprises to deploy the same single uh, assistant. Yeah, what would be your final statement uh, to the Sharks before I let them ask you questions? Currently, we have about 2,000 customers on our platform. We launched three and a half months ago. We're a seed plus. Um, opportunity as we've raised about $5 million thus far, and we're seeking $300,000 to help us uh, gain a bit more traction to our Series A round. Fantastic. Uh, just closing $5 million with 300 k uh, Dear Sharks uh, and dear investors, what what do you have uh, to say to, John, uh, to Brandon? Do you have any questions? What, what do you think are the biggest problems for customers in adopting your solution yeah so um i spent about 10 years in the telco space and every time we put in a new phone system or video conferencing system it was about six months of the culture right adopting that system now for chatbots which are really a direct descendant of the ivr um it's majority of time owned by the marketing department however most people want to access these tools from their mobile devices. So getting the mobile software developers to work with the marketing department is the biggest challenge right now for why companies like Royal Caribbean, who we're talking to, who has a Google dialogue flow, shop on the website, but can't figure out how to get it onto the mobile apps. And they have dozens of operations they want to automate there. So that's going to be the biggest challenge is getting the marketing and the software developers to play together. Okay. Uh, okay. John, to your to your point, we are second to market. There is a company named Voiceflow that oh. many know that has raised about $35 million, right? They are pure JavaScript deployment. I don't know about you, but I don't know many enterprise applications that want to use Flutter or React Native. Thank you, Brent. Appreciate that. Uh, any other questions from the Sharks uh, to Brandon? Anyone else? Okay, 
my question to the sharks anyone interested to connect uh, with brandon uh do you have any feedback to brandon all right thank you uh thank you brandon uh please share your information good luck with your race uh doing great uh, second to market fantastic um so uh we are uh probably about to finish our features today we have a few more projects but uh grow me ai is the next one and uh john before you go uh you are you want to finish 15 minutes before so uh before you go i'll let you have your final statements uh in front of the audience to give you final feedback and uh, final say if that's okay um uh, no absolutely then yeah, yeah. after yeah. that project Do you want to jump in now no no after that project and uh, so you have a little bit of time and uh, you can say that yeah. does it work uh let me say it now because i do need to leave a quarter to oh, let's time. do that yeah absolutely no look i i think very impressed with the founders here i think there's a lot of opportunity um and i think what's come clear from the questioning is think about barriers to entry over time you know, when you're getting started, there's no barriers to entry. Which ones can you build? How can you build defensiveness? And also be wary on building on top of someone else's platform. And it's difficult because a lot of the AI platforms out there, um, you know, enabling AI to do this. But just generally, you know, be wary of that. But uh, I think the quality of ideas and entrepreneurs here is fantastic. That's fantastic, John. Fantastic having you. Uh, it's hopefully you will join us again in the future, and uh, please stay uh, maybe for one more project uh, or so. Uh, but uh, great feedback and great to have you. Thank you. Um, we're moving on, and the next presenter is uh, Grow Me AI team. Are you guys there? Oh, I can see. Yes. Oh. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Okay. So you got two minutes. You may start now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hi. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Upaji. Um, we barely hear you. Can you make, can you speak louder? Um, is this any better? Um, no, but continue. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Just speak louder. So continue. Sure. So uh, there are 18 million high school students in the US. So college preparation is a stressful topic for 18 million households in the USA. The reasons being uh, the competition to get into the colleges is getting tougher and tougher. High schools don't have enough counselors. The cost of owning a private counselor is, is anywhere between 15 to $20,000 and only 4% of the parents can afford it. The students are, are the most stressed out individuals. They run behind a lot of resources in building a very strong, uh, well-rounded profile. So that's where Gromi.ai will come into picture. Uh, we, are, we are in the process of disrupting the traditional college preparation process through the technology enablement. Gromi uh, acts as a single hub of all the resources a student would require. It creates an action plan for the student and it tracks the progress. It connects them to the resources. And it also provides them smart recommendations about college selection, major selection, and even essay selection. So the uh, Gromi brings in efficiency into the college preparation process. And this platform is offered on SAS model so that students can pick up uh, uh, any model that, they, that suits their requirements. And we are trying to uh, bring down the cost of ownership of counseling services. And it saves time for the students and money for the parents. We started our journey three years ago. We placed more than 100 plus students into top 100 colleges. We have raised uh, uh, 200K as angel investment in the last couple of months. We have built the MVP uh, and the product is live now. And we are seeking 500K uh, to enhance the product with the AI enablement. And, and we want to venture into B2C to B2B model Thank as soon you. as the product is, is you, completely ready. Your uh, time is over. We are seeking uh, 500K. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much, uh, um, uh, dear sharks. Do you have any questions to to this team? Uh, anyone interested to connect with them? Uh, it was hard to hear. Sorry about that, uh, but sometimes it's technology not helping. What's the what's the go to market plan in terms of finding these students and acquiring these customers? 
so our students are our consumers and the parents are our customers so for the students we are we are going uh, going to do a digital marketing and social media strategy and for the parents we are doing traditional traditional market reach out through through uh, uh, meetups and and through uh, sponsoring uh, uh, parent groups and through facebook uh, facebook groups so we are doing the traditional marketing for parents and digital marketing through our student uh, for the students thank you it's a, I don't have a question, but rather a comment, uh, you know, with the cost of education, uh, tuition costs approaching 90,000 per year in this country, it would be great if you could help us uh, looking for all appropriate like scholarships and exactly. yeah. helping the students to apply. Right. So, so our, our model not only just recommends the colleges, but also recommends all, all the scholarships that the students are available uh, that, the, that are available for the students and they can uh, and they can apply for it based on their financial situation based on their background and based on their interests okay okay um, any questions? Do you, like, go ahead sorry it, it doesn't seem if there is any any like specific technology you don't need ai to do this or whatever uh, so it's not like something unlocked this thing because of some technology advancements so i wonder what is this what, what is the reason to do it now so uh, i mean to be honest i mean um we are living in a world where where information is power and 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 the technology disrupted every aspect of our life right from driving cars to eating food to watching movies so the college preparation is still done today the way it is done 70 80 years ago and and it is up for grabs and 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 uh, students are 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 literally struggling with time and parents are struggling with money and so this is this is a perfect time to disrupt the current process and 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 make it make it easy for of doing business for both students and the parents yeah maybe i can rephrase it like what why nobody did it before uh, so there are players in the market who are doing this in piecemeal, who are doing fragmented solutions. Somebody is doing essay writing, somebody is doing scholarships, and somebody is doing shortlisting of the colleges. We are, we are, we are kind of first of it where we thought about the whole nine yards and integrating with the resources. And, and college preparation is not just a one-time thing. It's it's a it's a brewing model, it's a brewing process over a period of four years. So we are we are positioning ourselves as pioneers in in in, in offering this end-to-end -end integrated process for college preparation thank you um my final question to the sharks uh is there anyone interested to connect with grow me AI team so thank you so much uh, for your presentation please share your GGW profile in the chat support others John, thank you for being with us. Uh, really appreciate that. Thank you for staying for the end of this speech. Uh, and we look forward to hear uh, from you and uh, see you on other future events. You have a great day, John. And thank see you. you later. Yeah. Um, the, and we are having final uh, presentation for today. Uh, that would be Darwin Monroy. And so then we'll have some feedback from investors, especially the question for today. I want to ask investors so you can guys think like why you rejected some of the startups. And uh, so maybe it's some feedback would be very interesting to listen for, for, for the guys. So Darwin Monroy, are you here? I uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Final presenter. Yeah. And uh, please uh, use two minutes uh, for your advantage. Go for it. Yeah, uh, I will be quick. Thanks. Uh, so this is Darwin. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Ideative Sync. So imagine you are driving blindfolded through heavy traffic, and the only tool you have is a GPS that speaks in a language that you don't understand. That's the reality for engineering teams managing complex software systems today. This is a reason why Ideative is building core labs to offer a guiding light in this chaos, empowering teams to navigate with ease. Uh, our AI platform analyzes vast data streams in real time, identifying proactively and providing actionable insights in a simple and understandable format. 
uh, with the global AI ops market projected to reach about 19 billions by 2030 and at a compound annual growth rate of 24%, there is a clear demand for solutions that like Coral Ops. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, despite the abundance of observability tools, teams still struggle to make, to make sense out of the data overload, which is the actual problem. Uh, what sets Coral Ops apart, it is its ability to correlate events accurately and providing actionable insights that are easy to understand from the, for engineer, engineers of all levels. Our platforms empowers teams to identify critical issues before they impact users, revolutionizing the way engineering teams operate. Are you ready to join uh, the next evolution in AI ops and building the very first SRE copilot? Let's work together to empower engineering teams and uh, put an end to blindfolded driving in the digital landscape. With uh, Coral Ops navigating through the chaos has never been easier. Just let's make magic together. And uh, yeah, right. that's my presentation for today. I Thank try you. to be quick. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. That's uh, that's good. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, this is the final presentation for today. Uh, we're not accepting other projects. We see uh, some more people willing to pitch, uh, but it's time to uh, wrap this up. Um, what's your questions to Darwin team? Uh, do, uh, do you have any questions? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyone interested to connect with this team? Anyone in or out? Perfect. Well, investors are silent, uh, so they are thinking uh, maybe they will be interested to connect to you, with you in future. Please share your GGW profile here in the chat, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, keep supporting others. Uh, we will uh, please come and pitch again. So this is the time when we wrap this up. Um, share that, and I have uh, some questions uh, to uh, our dear sharks uh, before we let you go. First of all, I would like you to uh, close the session with your words of wisdom and uh, your recommendations to startups. But, you know, uh, we saw so, such a big amount of startups you rejected today. And uh, maybe you can say a few uh, like insights, like why, why you rejected and uh, maybe you give some uh, thoughts and recommendations to that. Yeah, who wants to start? If, if my colleagues allow me, I got to run. Uh, so I'll say go for it. So oh, I enjoyed this. Uh, thank you all who pitched today. Thank you all for showing up. It was great to uh, be with you during this process. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, to your uh, question, Daniel. The yeah, I don't think about it that way. I I don't think about rejecting or not rejecting. I'm thinking about. I think about whether I can be value add to a specific team or company, or is there a, like something that deeply resonated with me during the pitch, and that's where I'm coming from. And if uh, I'm the wrong match, it's it's great, actually. You saved yourself some time uh, by not wasting it on me. So uh, that's, that's how I think about it, and uh, that's how I think it's, yeah, it's, it's just my way of, uh, of approaching these things. It's about chemistry, and if it's there, great. If it's not, no problem. Love Thank that. you all. Uh, have a great uh, weekend. Uh, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, Artyom. See you next time. Thank you so much. Great feedback. Alena, uh, sorry, Elena. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, yeah. What, what That's say? fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, just like Artyom, uh, rejection is the last word I would use, honestly, uh, because I don't think that I rejected anybody today. Uh, each fund, each investor, like we have our own uh, criteria, you know. So, uh, for example, if we don't invest in pre-seed rounds, then it's like it, and, and the company is pitching and they're raising their pre-seed round, it's just not a good fit. You know, like we, we, we're US-based, so we're looking for US fraction, fraction of the US. 
just to name a few, you know. So so we we have our own well-defined criteria also among things like uh, that we invest to versus we don't. You know, we don't invest in hardware, for example. We don't invest in the cryptocurrency, blockchain, uh, uh, life science, and, and whatnot. So, so uh, uh, most of the times, it's just not a good fit, not the right fit for us in terms of uh, of the traction, uh, geography, or uh, uh, or the vertical. Uh, and having said that, you know, please don't see this as uh, as rejection. Uh, continue building what uh, what you're building, and and uh, uh, look for those who invest in your space and at your stage. Uh, and I- I'm sure you will find people uh, who understand your space better than we do. So I will not take too much time because we're approaching three. So I'll, I'll, yeah. But just don't see it as rejection. That's such a great words uh, as a you and Artyom, and I, I love that you support entrepreneurs. Thank you for saying that. Uh, Spencer, what would you say? Sure. I mean, maybe just building on what was said there. Uh, you know, like we we have to say no to ninety nine percent of the companies we meet, and that's that's not a brag. Like I would love to invest in a large, in a much bigger portion of them, but we just there are constraints. Um, so, so having said that, I guess there are three kind of themes that, or three buckets I would put companies that I kind of rejected today. The first is AI companies without really clear defensibility. Um, if you're building on ChatGPT or on, or on a non-proprietary LLM model, I find it really hard to see how someone else isn't going to come and do something very similar. Um, the second one would be kind of incremental improvements versus an actual step change, an exponential improvement. There are a lot of companies here that were doing things. Also, a lot of them were, in, were within AI, but it wasn't clear to me that this is going to be a massive improvement. It looks like a nice thing to have. And then finally, uh, the whole feature versus company debate. Um, as much as I, I really hate the argument that Google will copy us because we know that they won't. Or if they do, they won't do it very well. As someone who worked for Google for a while, um, they're pretty bad at that. Um, but it, it is something to consider. Like, how are you going to turn this really cool product that you have into a platform or a company? Um, so it's just, just something to think about going forward next time when you pitch investors and uh, looking forward to connecting with the startups that um, I raised my hand for. Thanks, Dan. Love that. And the example was Google. Like, fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate that. Andrew, you're closing our global session, your first time with us, fantastic uh, participation. Hope you join us again. Uh, What you have in your heart and mind and uh, what feedback you want to share, let's go. Yeah, no, I think uh, building on what some of the other uh, investors have said so far, to me, um, you know, at the end of the day, fundraising is a lot like sales, right? And so um, I always, Think that there's kind of two different paths you want to go down on one is this like you know what i'll call like you know batch right you're sending emails to a bunch of people you're going to events you're meeting a ton of people you're just trying to 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 get out there get your name out there like spend time on that do it um and do it in a way that you you know you have a tight you know whether it's a two minute pitch or a 30 second pitch or if it's over email or text you know three, four bullets about, you know, why you're going to win, your team, you know, traction, everything else. There's tons of articles available on the internet and on Twitter uh, about how to write great, you know, cold pitch emails. Then at the same time, you know, you, I would also go and try to do just like, you know, just like sales, you know, kind of one-to-one sales. Um, I remember speaking to actually a VC, not even founder, something he was founded before, but said like, if I will sometimes send a cold email, where he wants to respond, where he knows there's a really good fit, right? And it's very personal. He'll spend 30, 60 minutes doing research, crafting their email, you know? So do your research, find those people that are really a great fit for you, whether it's a fund, whether it's an angel, whether it's, um, you know, uh, you know, an event that you should be at and should be speaking at, whatever that opportunity is, and take the time to really craft that, that message. So do the batch and blast, do that, get your name out there, go broad. I definitely think there's value in that. But at the same time, find those people that are your, you know, are going to be your first five, 10, 100 believers 
maybe it's a great customer that you want, you know, and applies to sales just like this fundraising. And go, and go after them with these really crafted messages that show that you've done the research, um, that you are a great fit for for them. They're a great fit for you. Well said. So on this note, we are closing go, uh, Digital Blue Sharks forty first. I'm uh, so grateful for all the presentation. Amazing uh, our panel of sharks. Uh, thank you, dear investors, for giving feedback, for asking questions, and also connecting with entrepreneurs. We, uh, dear uh, startups who presented and, and who didn't present, we are doing these events every two weeks. We will connect to, uh, to those entrepreneurs who investors selected. We have 12 matches today, 12 connections. We will do these uh, introductions probably tomorrow. And uh, yeah, please keep supporting us on social media uh, and everywhere. Spread the word so we'll keep doing this free event for you, connecting you with real amazing investors like we had today. Thank you, everyone. So I'm sharing a final uh, message here in the chat for you to give feedback or to register for the next event. You have a happy Easter, amazing weekend, and let's stay in touch. Good luck, everyone. and. Have a great the rest of the week. Take care. Thank you again. Thank you.